Lord Lighthouse of the Valley family and to our viewers all around the world. We want to welcome you again to our daily devotionals. And those of you that are joining for your very first time, we hope that you'll have an excellent time on this site. But more importantly, we want you to be comforted, exhorted, and edified. This is a great time to join in. We're on a 21-day prayer journey, and we're on day number 17. So if you want to catch up or if you want to see where we've been, you can go to lighthouseofthevalley.org. You can view the actual sessions, or you can punch on 21 days of prayer and see what we've been talking about. But you can also go on the video section and just look at every session. God has been good to us, and today we're going to talk about health. Well... You've heard me talk about fruits and vegetables and different things of that nature, but God is concerned about our health. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, the scripture says, and Paul is talking to his son in the Lord, who he wants to be strong. He says, for bodily exercise profiteth little. It, it, it does something, but godliness is profitable unto all things. So here's the deal. We need to be healthy Physically, we need our muscles and all of our, our, our systems to operate as they should, but we also need to be healthy spiritually. So health is not just in one area. One affects the other. If you have bad health in the natural, of course, your spiritual life can be affected. And if you have, definitely, if you have bad health in the spiritual, your natural body can be depleted as well. It, they go hand in hand. So God is concerned not only about our physical, but he's also concerned about our spiritual. In 3 John, here's what it says. And, and John is writing here a letter to the church. And in, verse, in, in John, 3 John chapter 1, verse 2, he said, Beloved, I wish above all things, above everything, that thou mayest prosper. And he says, be in good health. Be in good health. Notice even as thy soul prospereth. So they're married together. They're connected somehow. Now, you may be feeling like, I need to go on a diet, or I need to do this. Or, and, and those things may be true. And God wants you to eat right and to feed your body the right things. But don't do one as you neglect the other. Clearly, the Scripture is teaching us that they go hand in hand. So you want to have good spiritual health as well as having good physical health. You might want to hire a trainer or you might want to join a gym or you might want to get some uh, tape series that will help you in the health department. That nutrition, uh, getting better nutrition, a better diet. Diet and exercise are good. But also there's diet and exercise that we need to exercise when it comes to the Word of God and to spiritual things. Notice what the Apostle Paul said to the church at Corinth. Now they were spiritual, spiritual giants now. They were moving in the gifts of the Spirit and they had all the spiritual gifts that you would want. But yet, he said, they're still drinking milk. They're still carnal. They're still feeding on things that babies would when it came to spiritual things. They may have been had the athletics going on and they may have been uh, doing the triathlons and, and throwing the javelins and doing all the things that they do and, and, and showing the world how even the Greeks do it. But yet, they were carnal. They were malnutrition in the spirit. They didn't have the right diet, although they were eating the right foods in the natural. So here's what we want to do. We want to get a balance of all of it. Here's what the scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, and I'll also read verse 20. It says, what? Now, that, uh, now Paul starts this out. He says, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Now, you got two things again. They're blending the two. You've got the natural, and then you have the spiritual all united together. So that's why you have to take care of your body. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is the temple of God. God used to live in tabernacles. He used to live in the old temple. But he said, man, my whole goal, if you read the Old Testament, my whole goal is that one day I'm going to live inside people. Mm. And see, that's the whole purpose of the Holy Ghost now. The Holy Ghost takes up residence on the inside of us. In other words, this is his abode. This is his house now. This is God's temple. You are God's temple. He said, what? You don't know this? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? 
And then he said, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. So as I used to walk and do what I wanted to do, eat what I wanted to eat and, and digest whatever I wanted to digest in my spirit and in my body, I can't do anymore because, yeah, I'm physical and I've got to keep this physical looking right, being right, feeling right to house the spiritual. Amen. For he goes on to say in verse 24, you are bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, in the physical and in the spiritual, in your body and your spirit, which are God's. You're not your own anymore. You're bought with price. Glorify God, not only in the body, but in your spirit, not only in the natural, but in the spiritual. You see where I'm going here? Scripture bears this out, that he wants us to be healthy in the spirit and he wants us to be healthy in the natural. Do not put off one to save the other. Let's let them both grow well together. I'm going to give you six things that develop a healthy believer. And now I'm talking spiritually. Number one, hearing God-inspired preaching. You've got to hear that. Start hearing some preaching. Listen to preaching. Good, powerful, even hell and fire brimstone preaching, but some good preaching. Receive bound, uh, sound biblical teaching. And I mean by that, there's a difference between exposit, uh, expository teaching and the difference between evangelistic preaching. We need the preaching and we need the teaching. Jesus went everywhere preaching and teaching the Word of God. So this will help us to be healthy. And number three, participating in wholesome fellowship. Don't neglect yourself of gathering together with others. I know we're on lockdown right now, but you go on Facebook, you can go on FaceTime, you can go on Zoom, you can do all kinds of things to get in contact with others. Fellowship, you've heard me say it before, some of you, fellowship helps keep the fella in the ship. So you need good, wholesome fellowship. Number four, having an active personal and corporate prayer life. Have a time of prayer. Have a place you're praying and have a consistency in prayer, but also getting together with other believers and agreeing in prayer. This will help develop a healthy believer. And number five, developing the gifts of the Spirit. In other words, God gives every single person that receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost, gives every single person a gift, a spiritual gift, one of the nine that you can actually operate in. You need to find out what that is and then start developing it and operating in it because it will help you become a healthy believer. And finally, being a faithful and cheerful giver okay, of your time, talent, and your finances. Being a faithful and cheerful, that's the, op key, the operative word there, is cheerful. For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Being faithful in everything that you do. God is going to bless you. He's going to make you healthy. He's going to make it that bodily exercise is profiting a little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. This is going to profit you a little bit, but this right here is going to profit everything. So, But let's, let's not neglect taking care of this physical, while at the same time understanding that the spiritual is definitely connected to the physical. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and I pray for each and every man, woman, and young person that's watching this video cast and this, uh, this online uh, devotional. I pray that, Lord, you'll go into their hearts, that they'll realize that their body, soul, and spirit, and that all three of those components of who they are must be ministered to. Let them take care of the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let them take care of the spiritual man on the inside of them. Allow them to grow strong and to do exploits. You said for them not to be drunk in wine as in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Rather, be overflowing with this Holy Spirit. I'm praying, God, that men and women will push away from natural things and draw close to spiritual things, while at the same time, as they get the spiritual things, they will take care of the natural things in the right way. I'm asking you to bless them and anoint them for the days ahead of them. Make them healthy and let their souls prosper even as their spirit is prospering in Jesus' name. And for those of you that are watching for the very first time, I believe that God has sent me to draw you and to make you a little sensitive towards him and hungry for him. What does he want you to do? He wants you to embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
What does that mean, preacher? That means that you believe that he died, came to this earth, and he died on a cross just for you, and that he was buried in a grave, a tomb, just for you, and that he rose on the third day from the dead just for you, conquering death and the grave. And he wants you to believe that and embrace that and say to him, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior and I believe Jesus Christ is that Savior. I am wretched and wrong and I, I can't go to heaven without him and I want to embrace Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me, Lord, of my sin. When you ask God to forgive you of a sin that you didn't even have anything to do with, it caused you to do all kinds of other things, but it was that original sin of Adam that passed upon all men for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And when you ask God to forgive you of that sin, he forgives you right now and if he's forgiven you and you're that person i'm talking to at this moment you need to find a friend a relative a neighbor don't hesitate find someone and say i need you to baptize me in the name of jesus christ for the remission of my sins and they'll take you to a pool they'll take you to a body of water they'll take you to a baptismal tank or maybe even you're in your own bathtub fill it up and they'll baptize you in jesus name and when you come out of that water if you haven't already God said he will fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the promises to you, to your children, and to as many as the Lord our God is still calling. That's you. Walk that walk. And we'll see each other on the other side. God bless. We want you to stay healthy. Remember, we're on a 21-day prayer journey, and we'd like you to conclude it with us. God has been good to us. I'll see you tomorrow, Lord willing, in Jesus' name.